a much improved version of the engine that runs Photoshop's generative AI, also known as Firefly, is available right now on the web to use as Firefly and will no doubt be soon implemented into Photoshop as well. This new version is able to generate much better realistic looking images with realistic results that could be used for certain genres of real estate photography editing and with higher resolution. In fact, when we take a look at all these various images, each of those was 100% generated just by using Firefly. There are a lot of improvements to this. In fact, what you could also do with the resolution of this, it's much higher than what was in Firefly 1. Now, Looking at those images, you might think, well, my job's in jeopardy if I'm a real estate photographer or I'm a photographer of another genre as well. That's not true. In fact, this is just another tool that's going to help no matter how much they improve Firefly. I'm going to touch on that in this episode as well as what to do with this new Firefly to get some of the better results and also why you're going to be seeing some of these better results and things you can do with it, not just for real estate photography, but also some fun art projects as well. The first thing to note though is that this is a higher resolution AI engine. So in the past with Firefly 1, which is implemented into Photoshop recently, that was only about one megapixel. It was limited to a 1024 pixel square. Well, now it's four megapixels. So that's about a 2048 pixel square. And if you were to do a 16 by nine, you're looking at about 2600 by 1500 pixels. So much higher resolution resolution and it's not exactly 24 megapixels yet like you would get out of your camera but going from 1 megapixel to 4 megapixels is a big leap and it will no doubt continue to get this higher resolution. One of the biggest improvements though that AI always gets knocked for is its generation of people. So Firefly 2 has made massive improvements, including faces and fingers, which were usually the telltale sign of AI. And it's not there 100% yet, but it's very close. And this can be useful when making concept images for lifestyle and architectural work, as well as graphic design work that you can offer your clients for making brochures, newsletters, etc., so that you don't need to buy stock photos. Because just as with the official release of the engine of Firefly 1, Firefly 2 can be used for all commercial purposes. So it's not a beta, this is the real deal. But in my work, even right now, I've been using Firefly 2 for different things. For instance, when it comes to virtual staging, like this particular bathroom didn't have a picture over the toilet. So this was for a designer, and you know, this is paid by the hour stuff for both shooting and editing. So it pays a lot higher than your standard listing photography. But when they wanted this virtually staged, well, the ply design really didn't have anything good that would go above that toilet. So what it ended up doing was I used apply design to virtually stage in a frame up there with an image, but the designer wanted something that would match the theme. And they had some ideas. They showed me some things on Pinterest. So I went on to Firefly 2 and I created this Dalmatian. It's an interesting looking Dalmatian with blue in the spots and it's got this peach background, but that's what I use to then match the theme for this bathroom. So with that then, it's not just virtually staging, it's also paying me by the hour to do those edits to provide something special for the client, making me not just a photographer, but also a graphic artist that they can rely on another revenue stream then for me in my work. And before getting into the actual use of Firefly 2, I'm gonna show that in more detail. I wanna first cover one of the fears of using this and the AI fear of we're all going to be replaced as photographers. That's not going to be the case unless you don't learn it. Because like I just showed in this last example, a very simple virtual staging need that they had, I can provide something extremely custom for a client compared to anybody else that might be able to do some virtual staging, but they really wouldn't be able to get something into that space that that client was looking for. The same thing goes when it comes to making brochures or concept images. You might've seen a video I did recently when I did this in adding people in to an image for a commercial shoot, which is very common to have these movements of people in a, an active office, even though it was empty. So a lot of that stuff was added in there. But I wanted to mention something here also that I've spent a lot of time over the last few months dealing with Firefly 2. I found the ins and outs of it and why. 
Well, there's a little bit of a sad story there I did want to share with you before getting on to the rest of this video, and that's that over the last few months, we were dealing with a sick pet of ours, Roxy. It was our family cat. We had her for 15 years. She got very sick, and it was a very difficult time for all of us until we finally did have to say goodbye, and the times actually got even harder for all of us. So one of the things I did as a distraction, we were having our downstairs bathroom redone, and we needed some art on the wall, and so my wife had picked out something. I said, I can generate that. I'll bet you I can do that with Firefly. So I did, and then I got addicted to it, and I started doing a lot of work, and this helped distract from what was really going on and bring some happiness to all of us. And I did all these various type of things. I call it baby elephant art. And it was just something fun to where using Firefly, also using some of the tools in Photoshop for doing AI and other standard editing, I was able to make these. They're 16 by 26 inch prints. They turned out really well when I had them printed. And all of this was made using Firefly and Photoshop. So yes, it did bring me out of a dark place to be able to do this, but it also helped further my career. I wanted to share that with you so you have some background here also why I did this, why I took a deep dive into Firefly, and how I can see that not only myself, but you can also use this for your work and maybe also bring some sunshine into your life as well. So anyways, let's take a deep dive now into using Firefly 2. Now to use Firefly 2 right now, it's only limited to certain areas of Firefly. And once again, this will no doubt soon be in Photoshop as well, this new 2 engine. But what you want to do is go to firefly.adobe.com. Don't try to generate anything with this. The place that it's implemented right now, scroll down to text to image. And then we want to go to generate. Now they've got ideas that you can start off of, but the best way that I've found is just to go right down to the prompt down at the bottom. Now to make the one with the elephant in the bathtub where this whole thing started with my journey here with uh, bringing myself out of all this dark place and then also learning more along the way with using Firefly, let's start with that. And we type in something like baby elephant. Let's start very simple. Baby elephant taking a bath. And what we'll do is we'll say that it's in a vintage bathtub. Now here's an important part. Put a semicolon and then the style. And here I want it to be a photograph. So I want it to be photographic and I also want it to be realistic. So let's start with that and see what it does. So then you click generate. So the first thing you'll see is here are different options. So you can see here it generated these two. There's a third one here. There's a fourth one here. And if you click on any of those, you can see what it looks like. It'll then zoom in so you can see, oh, that's, uh, is it workable? Now, a lot of these will still have to have some Photoshop work done to them. And this is just a start because we're gonna take them into Photoshop and do some more AI. So anyways, we just need something to get close. And I found that using the Firefly 2 engine, which is up here, and then the aspect ratio of a square works well most of the time. You can change that aspect ratio, but working inside of Photoshop, then we can crop it to anything we want. So one of the things also that will make this uh, easier in Photoshop is you notice the depth of field. And that's something that you can uh, determine here by setting it one to be in a photograph. And then the photo settings, if you don't select auto and you go in here, then you can select what aperture. So if we want something with a very shallow aperture, let's say a 2.8, it would be a very wide aperture and it would be a very shallow depth of field and then the type of lens. We'll just go 50 millimeter, make it look realistic. There's also things you can do if you like the style of something, you can upload an image for it to base the structure off of. And then there's different things for the visual intensity, different styles. I never found any of that really all that useful, but this here I found to be the best. So now that we have this, we can change a few other things. For instance, there's really no laughter. It doesn't look like a good baby elephant. So what we'll do is baby elephant taking a bath, we'll say in a vintage bathtub. We'll put another comma over here and we'll say something like, and notice that it's also trying to give me suggestions, which most of the time I didn't find very useful. I'll say that it's laughing and maybe head tilted back. 
And this is kind of a hit or miss thing, but we'll try this and see what it does and click generate. And once again, it gave us four different choices and they're not the best here. We're starting to get some type of a smile out of it. This is what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna tell them that I like this and I really don't know if this has any effect, but I can say that I like it. And then I can keep going. For instance, down here, I can keep elaborating this. If I did like this, then I could download that particular image and it downloads it then to my computer. But I'll say in here, I'll elaborate a little more. I'll say a cute baby elephant. I'll say then comma with big eyes, comma, taking a bath and then in a vintage bathtub laughing held tilted back, and then I'll also say with bubbles. So we'll put some bubbles in here. So I'll just say comma with bubbles. And let's see what that generates. So here I had actually misspelled uh, cute, so I just corrected that. And then I also said with big eyes, just in a vintage bathtub. So he must be taking a bath and laughing. I kept all that the same and we're starting to get kind of close here, but I really don't like the look of necessarily the blue tub. So instead of a vintage bathtub, I can say a vintage copper bathtub, laughing, head tilted back, with bubbles, photographic, realistic, and then I can also change the lighting. Now they do have some lighting options that are down here. And I can say that on the lighting that we want it, let's say backlit or something. So I can say backlighting, but I can also say here just backlit and it usually knows what to do, like backlit with, from a window. So I can go further from a window. So let's do that and we'll generate. And now we're getting kind of close. I don't know why there's a copper tub inside of a tub, but you can see I've got some decent looking choices. Now this is better. This is looking a lot better. I've got that window in there. I could say the window from the side and I could keep going. And I know you might be afraid of, well, we only have so many generative credits to use. Well, if you take a look at how many generative credits I've used, I have none. <laughs> and that's because I use the heck out of Firefly 2, not just for creating this art, not just for creating this video, but also doing generative fills. And the thing is with right now, at least the Adobe subscriptions, if you've got a, a creative cloud plan, all that it will do is that once you run out of generative credits for the month, then it can slow down. So far, I haven't seen a problem with that. They may enforce that more. But anyways, once you've done this, download a few of them because you might have to do some edits. When you do, then bring it over into Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we can see this is the finished image. What I did was I started with a few different takes and I put them into different groups. This was one idea, this was another idea. So I was trying different ones and seeing which one I liked the best. Now to do this, the best thing is to think about your print size first. So what I did was we had measured out what we wanted for this print size. And I kept the same print size for the entire collection. I just thought that it was really neat having the skinny view where then the elephant looks even smaller because it's so low in the frame. I just thought that added a really nice little touch to each one of these. So anyways, to do that, you would go up to file and then you would go to new and you would select to have it in inches and then put the dimensions that you want. Now I kept the resolution at 150, which worked really well for printing these at this size. I mean, they still look very tack sharp. I know 300 is the best, but 150 works very well. And then keeping it at 16 bit. Once I did then, I just started with a black background and that's what I had here. Then the next thing I did, we'll start with the group that I liked and we'll break this down step by step. You can see there's a lot of layers inside of here. And what I ended up doing was starting with a couple different uh, images that I had downloaded. So let me turn the rest of these off real quick. And this was the first image that I actually started with. And you can see here that it got all kinds of stuff wrong, but I had another image that had a really good rubber ducky. That was this one here. So I took that rubber ducky, lined it up, and then just added a mask and put a better beak on it. Now the feet were all messed up as well. So I kept then stamping and making duplicates of these layers until I could get something where I could edit it. So I got something here that I stamped together and that looked pretty good and I can start editing it. So then the next thing I did was I put on some better feet. I edited the feet even more. I edited out some more things here and eventually then I started adding the proper toes in. So you can see here now I've got some toes. 
but there were a lot of other things that still needed to be repaired. So we'll go in here just a little bit to just the square so you can see what those are real quick. And I wanted to generate something that would be able to fix these colors. But first, I wanted to see what would it look like if I did a generative fill. So what I did was, we'll zoom all the way out, and I took the marquee tool. I took the rectangular marquee tool, and I just drew this space around here, and then I went up to Edit, and I went to Generative Fill, didn't type anything, just clicked Generate, and it gave me these three options. I liked the middle one the best, but I had a few different options to choose from, so I went with that. Then I did the same thing for the top. I took the Marquee tool, I went down to the top, overlapped into it a good amount, and then once again, I went to Edit, Generative Fill, and after clicking Generate, I had these various options. So I had this one, didn't really look that great, this one was okay, but I, I decided to go with this option. Now, these still aren't perfect, and there were still some things that needed to be done. For instance, the bubbles here. Didn't really do a great job on the bubbles in this area over here. It looks like netting. So I just went ahead and I fixed that. I put in some better bubbles. And how did I do that? Well, this layer was also a generative fill where I typed foamy bubbles. And then it gave me a whole bunch of selections here. So this layer was just a little piece of generative fill that I used the polygon tool around and it added some new bubbles for me. And I liked that a lot better. Now, I also needed to do some color corrections. And so that's where this layer came in, to where I did a color fill layer to then correct that color around his ear. So once again, I'm just doing a lot of stuff that I'm not going to rely on Firefly 2 to do, but I can do this in Photoshop. Then the next thing is I stamped all the layers together and then did some edits. So that's what this layer is here. So after stamping them together, then I did this, and I stamped that all together. And by the way, if you're not familiar with some of these editing techniques that I'm talking about, these are things that I teach in my online course on expert editing for real estate photography, and they apply to these things here as well. As you may know, I have an entire series of courses on doing real estate photography, and I've got links to that down in the description if you'd like to check that out. Going back here though to our baby elephant, I wanted to do more foamy bubbles. So I went over here, let's zoom in a little bit, and these didn't look good, so what did I do? I added some more foamy bubbles, and what was that? Well, that was once again another generative fill. So a few different selections, and I took one that I liked. Then the other part that I wanted to do, I wanted to do some dodging and burning and add some rays, and that's where then these two other layers came in, where then I have this as my final product. So you can see in closing that this was a very fun project, and it, it was a very fun project that yes, it brought us out of a dark place and gave us some new art to put in the house, but it also taught me something very valuable, and that's that we can use AI to do a lot of editing, not just for our own fun and entertainment, for our own art that we put on our walls, but this can be applied to just about any genre of photography, and if you practice it, if you find a project that you can get yourself into, totally unrelated to the genre of photography that you may work with, then this will also teach you because you can then dive into it. You can see what all you can do, have fun along the way, while then furthering your career as well.